The rainy season began. Sugriv and his companions spent the time in Kishkinda in enjoyment. But Ram and Lakshman spent the weary days waiting in a cave nearby. The forest paths were flooded and became rushing torrents, impossible to traverse. The search for Sita, therefore, had to be suspended. Ram brooded over Sita's predicament and was plunged in sorrow. Lakshman counseled him to bear with the delay till the rainy season ended. So Ram held his soul in patience. The people of Kishkinda mourned Vali for a time and then rejoiced in Sugriv and the survivors. Sugriv soon forgot the privations of his exile and the remorse of his brother's death and enjoyed to the full his present prosperity. And even Tara reconciled and adopted herself to altered circumstances in the interests of her son. The royal palace of Kishkinda was full of joy and merriment, and the gloomy months of rain sped with golden-winged enjoyment for Sugriv and his household. Only Hanuman felt anxious. He could not forget Ram's business. He was looking out for an opportunity to remind the king of his pledge to Ram. At last the rain ceased and the sky was cleared of cloud and lightning. The air was sweet with the perfumes of flower and the songs of birds and joy came to life in the forest again. The intelligent and high virtuous Hanuman now approached his king. Sugriv had entrusted all official duties to the ministers and was absorbed in pleasure. Hanuman knew that the wisest and best of men neglect their promises in such circumstances and addressed the king with great politeness. You have regained the kingdom of your ancestors and are in secure possession and enjoyment of it, but something yet remains to be done. You must fulfill your promise to your allies and so increase your fame and strengthen your power. Even at the sacrifice of one's own interests and pleasure, one should carry out the business of one's friends according to one's promise. Only so can a king's authority and reputation grow. It will be best to fulfill one's promise before the due date. In any case, delay should be avoided. Fulfillment after the promised date is worse than useless. One should not wait to be reminded by one's friends of what had been promised to them. All this you know without my telling you. Remembering what Ram had done for us, we must take steps to fulfill our promise without waiting to be reminded by him. Now the rainy season is over. There is no ground for further delay. We can no longer postpone the task of searching for Sita. Ram may be very patient, but that does not justify any further delay on our part. Did not Ram kill your foe promptly, not minding the danger or the blame involved? We should fulfill our promise with equal promptness. Thus politely did Hanuman convey his advice to Sugriv. The latter accepted it and thanking Hanuman ordered Neil to mobilize the Vanar army. All the world must be searched and Sita found. Order, therefore, the most powerful Vanners to come and join up at once. Those who fail will be summarily punished. Having said this, Sugriv went back into his private apartments. Ram and Lakshman spent the time in their cave waiting for the end of the rainy season and the fulfillment by Sugriv of his promise. But when the rains were over and the forest and its creatures shone with renewed beauty, Ram grieved intensely at the thought of Sita suffering at the hands of the Rakshasas or demons. He said, The world is full of life and joy, but Sita is in agony somewhere, and I sit still here, awaiting the favor of this, this ungrateful Bonner King. Alas, she walked cheerfully through the Dundak forest as if it were a palace park. 
She did not mind the stony ground and the thorns in the path. What must be her suffering now? But this, this monkey king drowned in his drink and reveling in the company of his women has forgotten his promise to me. Lakshman, go at once to Kushkinda and tell this base king. Remember, know that the path still yawns open whereby the slaughtered volley went to his doom. Do not follow him, but fulfill your promise to me. Ruin awaits him who forgets kindness and neglects friends. Beware of Ram's arrows. The four months of the rainy season are over. These four months were like four ages to Ram, but to you, steeped in pleasures, they have perhaps sped like, like minutes. By delay, you incur Ram's wrath and seek your destruction. Go, Lakshman, and tell him this. This was the angry and impatient message Ram wanted Lakshman to take to Sugriv. Carrying his brother's grief and anger, Lakshman was about to leave. Then Ram thought again. He knew Lakshman's nature and feared danger from his rashness. So he called him back and said to him, in conveying my complaint to Sugriv, do not be harsh. Whatever his faults, he is our friend. Point out his faults to him, but say nothing harsh. Lakshman agreed, but he found it hard to control his own anger as he approached the gates of Kishkinda. Noting the severe face of Lakshman, who was fully armed, the Vanar watchman became alert and made ready to guard the fortress. This enraged Lakshman still further. Some Vanners ran to the inner apartments and reported to Sugriv, Lakshman, furious with anger, is coming here holding his bow. We could not stop him. But the Vanner king was drunk and surrounded by women, and he took no notice. The king's servants ordered the sentry at the gates to stand firm and prevent the entry of anyone. Lakshman's anger became quite uncontrollable. He forced his way in. There he met young Angad, whose youth and misfortunes took away something of the edge of his wrath. He said, My child, go and tell the Vanar king that Lakshman is waiting at the palace gate to have audience of him on behalf of his grief-stricken brother. Angad went accordingly to the king's apartment and informed him of Lakshman's visit. But Sugriv was in no condition to understand. Angad saw this and took counsel with the ministers as to what should be done. Hanuman and some of the fellow ministers gently explained what was happening, and Sugriv was at last roused from his tipsy condition. Sugriv said, I am not at fault, am I? Why should my friends Ram and Lakshman be angry with me? Some enemy must have carried tails and set them up against me. Hanuman answered, It is my duty, O king, to say these things, and I say them. Do not be angry with me. We have delayed in carrying out our promise to Ram. We have forgotten Ram's grief. It is late, but not too late. Hence let us do quickly what we should. Let us seek forgiveness from Lakshman. Let us, without further delay, take steps to fulfill our promise to Ram. Then Sugriv agreed to receive Lakshman. As Lakshman went into the Vanar town, he marveled at its beauty and the culture of Kishkinda. Passing through beautiful streets, he stood outside the king's palace. Hearing the sounds of revelry, of dance and song proceeding from within, he saw that the Vanners had forgotten their promise and were lost in enjoyment. He could hardly control his anger. Still, he held back from entering the women's chamber and standing in a corner outside, he twanged his bowstring. The sound filled all Kishkinda with fear and trembling. Sugriv, hearing it, realized that the prince was indeed angry. He saw the danger and asked Tara to go and pacify the prince, saying, A chivalrous man like Lakshman 
will find his anger slip from him when he speaks to a lady, and it will be impossible for him to continue wrathful. Tara advanced toward Lakshman. In looks, in knowledge of the world, and skill in speech, Tara was unrivaled. She said to Lakshman, After enduring for a long time poverty and persecution, Sugriva is enjoying the pleasures and the prosperity you have secured for him. This enjoyment has gone to his head and he has lost his senses. I know his fault, but you should forgive him. The high-souled, who know the foibles and imperfections of our common nature, should temper their censure with compassion. So be not too harsh in judging of King Sugriva's surrender to temptations of the flesh, especially after his long trials and privations. But I can assure you, he has never lost sight of his debt or his duty to you. He has already issued orders for mobilizing the Bana warriors from all quarters. Today or tomorrow, they will all be here. Then the search for Sita and the war against Robin will begin. Have no doubts. And now please come in and see the king. Lakshman, now no longer angry, entered the apartment. Sugriv, descending from his seat, welcomed Lakshman. He said, Forgive my faults. With Ram's friendship and help, I am king today. How can I ever forget what I owe to the valorous and good Ram? He can destroy his foes without any help from me. I, with my armies, I can only follow him, that is all. Surely, Robin will perish. The search for Caesar will soon begin, you mark my word. So please, you forgive, forgive the delay of which I am guilty. Lakshman was pleased and said, Ram is your equal in honor and prowess, none else. Come with me to Rishyamuk and give him words of comfort in his grief. Sugriva and Lakshman went in a palanquin to Ram and explaining the arrangements already made satisfied him. Ram was pleased and said, you indeed are a real friend. Like the clouds yielding rain, the sun destroying darkness, and the moon pleasing human hearts, a good friend comes to one's help spontaneously. I am happy in your friendship. Now the end of Robin and his race is certain. Even as Ram was expressing his gratitude and joy, great multitudes of Bonners, under their respective leaders, arrived and assembled. They came from distant forests, mountains, and coasts. The dust they raised darkened the sky. Millions of monkeys and bears in a variety of shapes and colors were there. Sugriva addressed this enormous army and showed them their appointed camping places. 